May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord. Amen. We've just celebrated Ascension Day, the day when in recent years, and this year is no exception, we're invited to join in with the Thy Kingdom Come prayer initiative. An initiative that has, over just a few years, spread around the world. During these days, people from all countries, cultures and denominations are invited to pray for their friends and family to come to know Jesus. Unsurprisingly, the theme of prayer rings out from our two readings today. Our Gospel is the first part of what is commonly known as Jesus' High Priestly Prayer, where he prays for his disciples and the coming church, filling an entire chapter in the Gospel. By the end of the Acts reading, Jesus has ascended into heaven and those same disciples are devoting themselves to prayer. Throughout Jesus' life story, we see time and time again the importance he places on prayer, often prefixed with early in the morning. And as the story of the early church unfolds through the pages of the book of Acts, the believers, amongst other things, devote themselves to prayer. I wonder if you're already starting to feel anxious about where this might be heading, whether a sense of inadequacy is descending upon you as you realise prayer is going to be the main theme this morning. I wonder how many of us would consider our prayer life to be going great. In my experience, most of us struggle and generally feel inadequate when this topic is raised. I'm really grateful that in preparing this week, I came across a talk by Rowan Williams all about prayer that he did in Sheffield Diocese a few years ago. He quotes a Catholic writer, John Chapman, who asserts there are two main principles we need to keep in mind. His talk was specifically about times when we are really struggling, but I think the same principles are helpful at most times. Firstly, pray as you can, don't try and pray as you can't. And secondly, the less you pray, the worse it gets. So pray as you can, don't try and pray as you can't. I love the simplicity in this. In other words, work with the grain, not against it. Start small and build up. Use words that are helpful at a time of day that works for you. I wonder how often we make things harder for ourselves by, with the best of intentions, setting goals that are totally unrealistic, inevitably leading us to fail and feel disappointed. I've always struggled that Jesus gets up early in the morning. That's not a great time of day for me. How refreshing to know that that's okay. It's not the time of day that's important, rather doing it that counts. Jesus also often prays on his own, but notice the disciples spend time together in prayer. I learnt a few years ago that even in monasteries, the novices' prayer training started with others, and only over time were they encouraged to pray on their own, and even then for slowly increasing amounts of time. Pray as you can, not as you can't. It's why I think there's real wisdom in our diocesan prayer community, we're invited to read one verse of scripture and say the diocesan prayer and the Lord's Prayer each day. It's not read the whole Bible or pray for two hours, but short and simple. If you do more, well, I think that's okay. And whilst the intention is daily, even the bishop has admitted he's missed days, but we're all human. It's more important to restart and continue than beat ourselves up. Which brings us to the less you pray, the worse it gets. In times of struggle, though praying is inevitably hard, which is why we need to keep point one in mind, not praying makes things harder. We might not feel like it or feel the benefit at the time, a little like eating your greens, as Rowan would say, but experience shows it does make a difference. And when we forget, drop out of the habit, beginning again sooner rather than later, even in the smallest of ways, is a step in the right direction. So wherever you are at in your prayer journey, and whatever season of life you are in, I hope that encourages you to be kind to yourself, to work with the grain, 
And if you've struggled to restart, an encouragement to begin again, even in the smallest of ways. And may I encourage you over these days, as we wait to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, in union with Christians around the world, that part of your prayer is for your friends and family to come to know a relationship with Jesus and the life eternal that he brings. We're encouraged to pray specifically for five people, and if using the wristband is a helpful reminder, then great. Remember, it's about doing what we can, which may be as simple as once a day naming them before God. But if you wish, you could always do more, and there's ideas in your resource packs. May we trust it makes a difference and see God at work in those around us, that his church will grow as people find life in him, even during these times. Times where it's been reported one in four people in the UK have sought out a church online. It seems God is already at work. May God's church grow, which is what Jesus prayed and continues to pray. Amen.